Hello and welcome to February Director's Cut with December production numbers. We have Mr. Lynn Helms here, so go ahead and get started. Thank you, Jessica, and thanks everyone for tuning in. Uh, we're doing the 2022 wrap up, uh, looking at the month of December, and it was an extremely difficult month. Uh, we saw oil production for the second time in the month drop below a million barrels a day. And uh, so we were down 13% uh, to uh, 956,000 barrels a day. Uh, interesting, by contrast, uh, we saw our competitor state, New Mexico, go up by almost 2% in their production. Uh, they were not impacted by what we saw in uh, North Dakota and Western North Dakota. Uh, so we were 4.4% below revenue forecast for those that track that. And of course, with the legislature in town, uh, everybody's extremely interested in that. So volume wise, 4.4% uh, below. The great news is that price wise, uh, price was 52% above revenue forecast. So uh, as far as state revenues, uh, everything was fine and, and still continued to, to fill the buckets and to uh, over overfund uh, state revenues with regards to oil and gas tax revenue for the biennium. Um, natural gas uh, also down 13%. So no change in the gas oil ratio with regards to uh, November versus December. And uh, that's encouraging news as uh, you know, that's the looming thing that ultimately we're gonna have to deal with in North Dakota. Uh, healthy permitting numbers, uh, rig count uh, is solidly in the in the mid 40s. So hanging in there and today rig counts at 46. So uh, it was up four from November to December and it's up two uh, from December to today. Uh, only one operating on federal surface. Um, New Mexico by contrast though was up nine rigs. Uh, and so uh, we're we're lagging behind there in development activity too. Wells waiting on completion, really no change. And as you would expect, uh, a boost in the inactive wells with uh, the blizzard conditions and the extreme cold weather that we had in December. So uh, wells completed, uh, we're ahead of forecast. 67 wells were completed in, uh, I'm sorry, that was in January, 104 in December. So. Uh, the early part of the month prior to the snowstorm, uh, really good results. And even today, uh, we're counting 18 frac crews out there operating across the state. So uh, completion numbers are holding in there um, with the better weather, uh, especially in, in February here, although next week looks a little bit problematic. We'll see what if the forecast uh, lands where we think it's gonna land, gonna have a little trouble coming next week, but with the, the nice weather at the end of January, early February, uh, we're seeing strong numbers uh, in terms of the field data coming in, in indicating uh, pretty strong production uh, last part of January, early part of February. Early January uh, could be a little problematic. It was extremely cold uh, starting about Christmas time all the way through mid-January. So we'll see how that looks, but we, we should be uh, well above a million barrels a day at that point in time. Like the rest of the state, uh, Fort Berthold was impacted by the weather conditions. Uh, continue to have five drilling rigs operating there, but production was way down in December. Uh, interesting to look at both natural gas and crude oil storage, uh, both well above averages uh, for the nation and uh, at average numbers uh, basically for um, worldwide. So uh, we're, we're seeing strong uh, crude oil stocks. The refined product stocks are down though, and I think that's a result of the cold weather sweeping across the country and problems that, that the refineries had. Um, also, you know, a, a little alarm bell or a warning flag uh, was just announced two days ago, another release from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve of 26 million barrels. I don't know where that's going to go. The refineries are operating at 90 plus percent capacity. Uh, so I, I would hope that we're not exporting crude oil that's coming out of the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. It seems like the uh, administration is completely out of sync with what's going on worldwide and, and nationwide in terms of crude oil supplies versus 
refined product supplies. Um, seen a little uptick in uh, seismic activity that's centered around carbon storage and also the um, hand soil recovery project down in Bowman County. Uh, good strong numbers uh, in, in terms of uh, gas capture held in there at 94 uh, percent. So we're, we're seeing a strong commitment to uh, gas capture by our operators, both uh, the operators, uh, the publicly traded and, and the private companies. So uh, there's going to be a lot of pressure. Uh, it's the first time in three years that we've seen natural gas prices uh, for delivery at Watford City below two dollars. And uh, and so we've got a, a crude oil to natural gas price ratio of 40 to one at this point. So uh, um, financially, those gas capture requirements uh, and those gas capture commitments are uh, very expensive financially at this point. Uh, so it's encouraging to see operators uh, continue their commitment there. On the federal level, there's a hearing next week on uh, North Dakota's lawsuit against the Department of Interior to uh, order them to to get with the program and start holding quarterly lease sales. And so uh, that'll be next Tuesday, next Tuesday, the 21st. Yeah, next Tuesday uh, up in Minot, uh, there'll be a hearing before Judge Trainer. Uh, also, uh, BLM comments were submitted by the North Dakota Industrial Commission on the new uh, waste prevention, or as we call venting and flaring rule. Uh, you can access those by sending Jessica a request uh, they they haven't been posting those on the Industrial Commission website, but you can send a request to Jessica and she'll get those to you. Uh, in addition to that, uh, comments uh, have been submitted on the uh, um, the EA, the, the proposed update of the EA on North Dakota leasing uh, with regards to greenhouse gas emissions, and you can get those from Jessica by submitting a request. Uh, Comments have been submitted. Um, I think the deadline just passed and I, I failed to note that in my director's cut, but uh, Monday was the deadline for comments on uh, the emissions rules, the new um, source, uh, existing source and new source emission rules that are being proposed by the EPA. And uh, we'll make those comments available as well. Uh, I should have mentioned that they were they were due Monday at five o'clock and, and so the North Dakota Industrial Commission submitted comments as well as the Department of Environmental Quality uh, and all of those comments have gone in and we will make those available. So uh, everything is operating normally in North Dakota, uh, gas capture wise, production wise. Um, with the warmer weather and, and the changing weather conditions, we're seeing a, an uptick in uh, pipeline leaks and so uh, we're monitoring that carefully and trying to get to the the bottom of uh, the root cause of those failures and also uh, looking pretty hard at the data sharing requirements uh, that are in our rules in terms of operators and, and disposal operators sharing data to make sure they they catch those leaks earlier. Um, haven't had a really significant leak just recently, but we, we've had uh, several. And so that, that's a, another factor that comes about because of our winter weather. So with uh, everything except the inability to, uh, to move people to oil wells and, and sites to keep them operating uh, and the uh, shutdown of probably about 400 wells, I think our, uh, our monthly well count dropped by uh, 350 for active wells between November and December. So we saw about 350 wells go offline and uh, with the winter storm and the cold weather, those didn't get put back on production until right near the end of the month of January. Uh, that's everything I had. We did have one uh, question come in ahead of our webinar, and that's a great question for Justin to answer. And that's about, uh, what's being done in the area of making sure that we can uh, produce and uh, add value or export our natural gas. Anything else come in, Jessica? That not yet. Okay. So we're playing second fiddle to the North Dakota legislative session. Uh, everybody is really tuned into that. Uh, lots of activity over there. 
uh, with regards to the Department of Mineral Resources. Uh, our budget uh, is working its way through the House Appropriations and uh, also uh, it looks like the legislation that uh, was attempting to uh, eliminate our, our ability to put together these carbon storage facilities uh, is going to go to the Senate floor with a do not pass. Uh, we'll see how that turns out. With that, I'm going to turn it over to Justin and we can talk about uh, where all of this great crude oil and natural gas goes and how it gets there. Thanks. Thank you. Right, good. All right. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Justin Kringstad, Director of the North Dakota Pipeline Authority. Uh, we'll get right into production update from our neighboring states. We do not have a clear snapshot yet of what took place during those winter storms in our neighboring states. Obviously, I'm anticipating similar types of, of impacts, particularly on that eastern Montana side when I uh, recall back to the extent of that storm system. And so we're we're anticipating and, and figuring on kind of a region-wide uh, depression in, in overall gas or crude oil and natural gas volumes. When we look at uh, kind of historically where the, the crude oil and the natural gas month-to-month uh, -month shifts have fallen, uh, this was the fourth uh, largest uh, decrease in both crude oil and natural gas production month-to-month. -month. Uh, when we look back historically, obviously we've got the, the COVID events of, of 2020 and then April uh, being the only other larger non-COVID and weather related event for the region. When we look at our uh, crude oil movements, um, again, when we look at December, December is it's tough. Whoop. <laughs> we lost some, lost some screens here for the moment. Uh, I tried to turn one on and turn the other one off, and I think it's off. Yeah, it is. Oh, there we go. Uh, so the month of December, things are obviously a, a bit squirrely uh, with uh, the weather events and production decreases. And so uh, volumes that are committed to various transportation modes and markets um, may may influence some of the, the figures a little bit. But when we look at that, that statewide trend, a slight decrease in the overall movement uh, market share uh, by pipe. Everything was largely down just because volumes are down. Uh, and, and really the only growth in just a percentage basis was on the, the crew by rail side. When we look at market pricing, uh, we've seen a widening spread, uh, which isn't a positive necessarily for North Dakota, but uh, that pad one, pad five, pad three, those coastal markets and that Midwest pricing in pad two. Uh, if you recall a number of months ago, it was largely on par uh, with what we were seeing in the Midwest. Uh, that has shrunk. These are November numbers. It's the most recent we have. Uh, it'll be interesting to see even as the, that cold snap hit in December. I know there was a number of, of refining challenges in the Midwest uh, that again may have put some additional downward pressure on that overall market price, which um, North Dakota has largely fared fairly well. Uh, we do have good connectivity down to that Gulf Coast with Dakota access, uh, but that just overall uh, seeing that trend is, is certainly not a positive uh, positive swing for this the state. Uh, when we look at crude oil volumes leaving by rail, largely steady down just slightly, but right around that 80 million or 80,000 uh, barrels per day, just over a train a day, uh, roughly on average, um, leaving the region. Where it's going, we've seen continued strength to that pad five, that Pacific Northwest area, um, now close to 90% of, of all oil estimated to be going that direction versus the only other destination right now that we're aware of uh, accepting Bakken crews in that pad one, uh, that extreme east coast refineries that uh, again are tied to that world market. Very little, if any, pipe connectivity, so they're requiring either waterborne shipments for deliveries or a rail barrel from a uh, location like North Dakota. And where we sit today, uh, again, we're, we're still seeing strong pricing for a light sweet barrel uh, at Clearbrook relative to WTI. That Brent WTI spread now uh, wider than it was last month. It's now well north of $6. And then uh, the LLS pricing down on the Gulf Coast, again, strengthening as well relative to that Cushing uh, barrel. So some of the comments Lynn had made earlier about storage volumes and all of that coming into play when we look at what's happening in that Midwest versus 
uh, again, those coastal areas that are largely tied to the, the world markets on the water. Uh, not much to, to talk about on slide 10 relative to those uh, movements by truck and rail across the border. And again, uh, largely consistent numbers on the gas capture, which is always encouraging, uh, especially in a month like December where we saw such severe uh, disruptions. Um, it, in many cases because of either, again, extreme cold challenging the gathering, roads challenging um, NGL movements or any other movements to, to keep that natural gas flowing. <laughs> um, it's encouraging to see uh, the, the discipline and, and the industry continuing to stay on top of that challenge. So uh, again, very good news. And now uh, very consistent, five to six percent. Um, we're continuing to hear discussion from a lot of our larger publicly traded companies. Again, looking at that 2025, looking at that 2030 targets for zero routine flaring. Um, so we're, we're continuing to plan as such when we look at where this trend is going and what type of infrastructure we're going to need uh, across the basin to, to keep pace. And in December, again, positive news on gas gathering, just as many connections as new wells producing gas. So uh, again, very, very encouraging. We did see some slight weakening in what the EIA was forecasting for oil price. Uh, when we look out uh, two years to the end of 2024 here, EIA uh, projecting in the upper 60s for that crude oil price. So again, they are anticipating some weakness here um, in the near term over the next couple of years. On the natural gas processing side, uh, again, those discussions are ongoing about what the, the next fleet of expansions or greenfield projects will look like. Uh, again, some very encouraging signals from, from the industry that they're taking this very seriously and, and we're going to continue to stay on top of this, but nothing nothing public at this time to, to discuss. On the Bakken natural gas infrastructure, I'll quickly move. We'll, we'll talk about northern border for a moment, then I'll, I'll touch on the question that came in before the, the event here. Um, we've seen very strong uh, North Dakota gas volumes moving on to the northern border pipeline. Again, hovering around that 80% today. What that is influencing though, as we move to slide 18, is certainly the BTU uh, numbers on, on northern border. So as we've seen, you know, coming out of that, uh, the, the dip in that November, December timeframe, getting into the January, February, some strengthening, some nice weather here in the last couple of weeks. And uh, again, as that Bakken gas moves on the border, that BTU number starts to, to creep up and especially the 80% market share that we're, we're seeing today, um, we'll keep an eye on this. Uh, again, nothing, nothing public in front of FERC at this time related to this, but yeah, it's just a, a market indicator that we, we keep close tabs on. There was uh, last week uh, just a, a two day outage or not a, not a complete outage, but just a, an unplanned compressor issue at the St. Anthony facility here in North Dakota that did decrease northern borders Talk capacity. And uh, and so as we, we look at northern border, they're back in uh, full full capacity now uh, exiting the state. Uh, largely during that event, from my understanding, uh, we saw mostly Canadian gas being backed off and, and North Dakota gas continued to take more market share during that. Uh, event which was again encouraging. It's difficult to predict if we'll see North Dakota gas start to back off or Canadian gas or a mix of both, but uh, from my understanding it was largely Canadian gas during this event that was being backed off of the northern border. And so lastly, um, just pulling up this map to discuss the question that came in related to natural gas value for the Bakken and, and where does that um, where does that come from? And um, as we know the the Bakken natural gas, I don't talk about it much in here. I uh, probably should talk about the natural gas liquids more than I do. Um, the, when we talk about Bakken natural gas and the value at the wellhead for that producer and royalty owner, it's going to be in two streams. You've got the residue gas that, that's easy to talk about, you know, talking about Henry Hub pricing and, and northern border, but then we also have uh, some of the richest natural gas in the world here in the Bakken, so very high natural gas liquids content. So. Um, the value from those natural gas liquids largely uh, going in a few different directions. We've got natural gas liquids heading down the One Oak systems down to Bushton, Kansas, that mid-continent, and then continuing on to the Gulf. We've got some ethane heading up into the Alberta pet chem market, some uh, NGLs getting into the Chicago market on Alliance. So those providing value back to North Dakota. 
Uh, but then on the residue or the dry gas side, you know, certainly we're largely uh, tied to pricing on northern border as it heads down into the Ventura market, the Chicago market, largely influencing that, that North Dakota price for that component of that gas value uh, chain. So hopefully that answers uh, the question as we go forward. Uh, again, looking at those next sets of expansions, whether it's into the Cheyenne area, additional localized demand, um, and, and some additional projects that, that folks are, are working on to, to maximize that value as much as possible. So with that, Jessica, if there are any other questions, I'd be glad to, to answer them. You scared to look every time I look at you. <laughs> I don't see any questions. If there are any questions, go ahead and type them in the chat. I surely don't see any. Okay. Well, thank you all. Good rest of your day.